Hello everybody, what's going on? My name is CML and welcome to How I Made Lost Mountains, the VIP mix, a self-remix essentially. Let's get started. Alrighty, so if you've missed any of the previous parts that I've covered so far in terms of different songs and whatnot within this series, there'll be a link in the playlist for any of the songs that I've covered you know, past, future, depending on whatever you, whenever you're watching this. So there you go. And if this is your first time watching this, what this series essentially is, is it's just, it's just me explaining how I made a particular track that I've basically done in the past or very recently. And so for this song, we're covering my, my self remix or VIP mix of, um, of my track Lost Mountains and how this is breaking down is into three separate parts, the arrangement elements and goals which for that first part will be going in goals, elements, and, arra and arrangement. After that, the second main part is uh, sound design, where, we're talking about how, where I talk about how I made the sounds. And after that, mixing and mastering, where I give you a very straightforward tip about mixing and mastering. So let's go ahead and get started with the very first part, which is arrangement, elements, and goals. And here we go. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's get on to the uh, arrangement elements and goals for this track. So, like I mentioned in the introduction, this is going to be covered in reverse order for this particular first part, which in that case will be goals, elements, and arrangement because it just, you know, whatever. Uh, but in terms of the actual goal for this, very, very straightforward. It actually was just simply to make a very respectable, a very good, a very 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 well done remix of a classic track of mine personally lost mountains now the original mix of lost mountains it was actually really like a glitch hop but also a little bit of halftime in there as well um of a you know just kind of a like a i don't know just some type of track that i kind of felt like had the theme of exploring a mountain range and snow covered mountains and things like that it kind of felt like it had that and to the point where like for me at least, I was initially going to call that track Ice Tops. Um, and I really like that song a lot. But at the same time, that was also a fairly old song. I think I made it back in like 2015, 2016. And so there's a lot I've learned in the past about four years or so. Maybe three and a half, depending on you know when the actual months are. Uh, between when each I published those songs. Between the, you know, the remix and the original. But... You know, I figured, you know, it'll be a good opportunity to make a remix. And I did try to make some remixes before of these. I might actually just release them as just like unfinished songs or something like that for like a special video or something. That'd be kind of interesting. But, um, but basically, uh, this, this song is actually the good attempt, good attempt of it and the one that I actually finished. And I think overall it's very, very well done. Um, there are some things that are representative of the original and there's also a lot of new material in the song too and it's really great as well because that's kind of the direction i was going for um and most of the new material i'm going to say is actually strictly within the sound design so um uh, there is actually no new uh reused sound in this song um so for example like the monster growl that you hear a lot in the original mix that's not even there like a lot of the uh, high pitch re um like phasery bases that I covered in like in the previous sound is uh, previous I made tutorial um, or breakdown. None of that stuff is there. There is all but a but basically um, I guess you could say quote unquote original because the way I constructed the sounds of uh, new sounds in there. So it's really good overall, and I just love this remix. And one of the things I really wanted to go for with this remix, in particular, is that there was this track called. Um, it was called uh, To Discover. Um, it sounds like I'm saying, you know, To Discover the Land, but no, that's just how I pronounce it. I'm going to bring it up for you so I can actually uh, show you the thing. It's by a name, uh, by a guy named Clockvice. I really only listened to one of his songs. It was like AU5 remix he did. Um, so it's, I don't know, it's a, it's a, let me see if I can find it. It's To Discover. And I'm gonna, and it's by a group, a duo group named uh, Eckley. I don't know, Echo. Uh, I'm not even sure you pronounce it, but this is the original song, well, the remix. 
And I'm just gonna go ahead and skip to the drop. Yeah, when my thing actually loads and stuff. So. It's a fun track. So yeah, you can kind of get the idea of the feel that I was trying to go for that particular song. And I think I did a pretty decent job, at least in my opinion. It's obviously not the exact same, but you know, you can kind of see the influence a little bit. I definitely wanted some glitchy stuff in there, and I think I did a pretty decent job of introducing it. So, fun times there. Now, in terms of all the elements and things like that, there is actually a fair decent bit of it. I think way more in the than the original mix, uh, as you can see right here. Like, just, um, there's like a actual like um, a melodic elements. There's a little bit more in there, and definitely a lot more for the um, sound design aspect. So the first thing that we have here is this serum. It's just a really basic serum patch that I have. It's just simply a basic pluck with just a small bit of niceties on there. Not really too complicated. Just really not that. We'll, we'll maybe touch on that a little bit in sound design. Maybe. Because um, it really is just that simple. It's just the first thing you hear. Nothing special with that really at all. Um, that's the first melodic element. The next one that you hear is the main strings in the drop. Yeah, and that that little bit of like do 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 that, that last bit right there is just done by growth speeds, just in case you were wondering. I kind of, like I said, I wanted a really glitchy style, and that was adding to that glitchiness, which is very useful for me. Um, so, there you go. Next thing after that, we have a second set of strings, but this takes place first in the breakdown. It's just like some sort of simple string pluck. Uh, is this it? Oh. It, it take, it's direct, that's MIDI directly ripped from the original. This is the actual, um, like, string thing right here. It's just like the main melody, but some, what's a little bit of modifications there. After that, we do have a, uh, I think a choir. As well, that's introduced in the first drop. I should have probably talked about this first if I'm going to go chronologically speaking. Fun times. And then finally, we do have a piano that is actually introduced at the breakdown as well. Um, it's in the some other part of the breakdown. Where is it? Uh, right here, actually. Yes. Literally just mirroring what the what the strings and the choir are doing. Uh, the the whole like the intro, the first breakdown, and the, um, well the intro breakdown and then the outro. Very simplistic in terms of um, actual like. Um, music theory and arrangement there really isn't much to it it's almost actually kind of borderline boring in some in some aspects but really this music right here i really wanted to just to drop to be as heavy as possible so i mean and it really does get really wild in some aspects <laughs> Yeah, 
sometimes. Um, so there you go. Now let's move on to, I think that's actually the last element as far as melodic stuff. We do have some, a lot of basses, as you can just hear, like lots of stuff. It's pretty nuts. Uh, I wasn't exactly expecting to have this many sounds in here, but I'm really glad it worked out the way it did. So um, let's just go basically and I guess you could say kind of at least top down order of my list that I have here. I, uh, every single time I make these things, I have, a, I have a little bit of a list that I go through. Basically just some notes just so I make sure I stay on track. So as you can see, no difference there. But anyway, let's get started with that list. So the first thing, at least according to my list, if you were paying attention, is the sub bass. It's just very simple. It's not really anything spectacular, huh? The harbor bass. And literally playing the same note, which is F sharp. <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of jokes that people, that a lot of producers make when it comes to, like, bro step type music. Where it basically the like the actual note of the bass does not change at all. Like if you listen to like any bro step track and you actually listen to the pitch of the sub bass, you'll notice it never changes. It's always like F G, in my case F sharp. Um, you know, it's always there. It's just always like that particular note until you get maybe like to the breakdown, or if the or if the artist actually feels like doing doing something a little bit funnier, they might change it up a couple little bit, like a little semitone here, or maybe two semitones down. You know, just to make it sound good. But most often, it's just sticking to the root, and this song is absolutely no exception. So <laughs> funny stuff there. Uh, next one that we have here is, I call this a high transformer. I think this is the fruit, the next one to plays. Yeah, this is, yeah, a high transformer. This is a resampled sound. This is where most of the sounds are coming from. It's really nuts. <laughs> Um, and, oh gosh, I did not mean to do that at all. Um, but this sound right here, it's, it, I'm not really getting into the sound of that, because like I said, this is, that's just getting a little bit too technical for just showing what the sound is, but this is a harmony sample sound, and one thing I do want to keep note is that just about every single sound, except for this harmor, this thing called Stronghold Metallic Respace, just about everything aside from that is basically your sample sound, like, Literally everything is a resampled sound. Um, uh, gosh, dog. Uh, yeah, everything is a resampled sound. And there really is no exception to this whatsoever. I mean, other than the, like I said, like other than the sub bass and the resound, it's all resampled. Every single last one of it. And there is a reason behind that, because I like resampling and harbor. Um, I guess I start from machines playing rough too. Yeah, this is the only other one that's not resampled. So, but yeah, the next one we have is basically a. Um, if we go up, we have a zombie here. This is a real. I think this is probably the newest one out of all of them. The really good sound. Oh shoot! I should have forgot the solo of that. Doop. There we go. Think. Yep. That's a just that that really evil sound right there. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. After that, we also have, and then as we go by my list, um, we have This Is Pretty Nasty. This is actually, it is actually pretty nasty, honestly. It's a, oh gosh, it's kind of disgusting. You can find it. Where in the world is it? Some. Oh my gosh, what in the world did I put the sound at? Oh yeah, it's somewhere back here. Yeah, it's that kind of sound right there. 
Yeah. After that, we also have Machines Playing Rough. This is a, um, this is not necessarily an original sound, but it is modified a lot and uh, through different methodologies. It's, there's a lot of machinery going on there. Oh my gosh, I don't remember where these sounds are at. Probably look at it, shouldn't I? Just, just so I can actually see where everything is at. Shouldn't I? It would be useful. Aha! Yep. And then, uh, uh, the Vomit This Goo. I've used this in a different track before. I've used this within, uh, what is it? Um, gosh, what is that song? Um, oh yeah, my, my remix of Goo Lagoon from AU5. There wasn't, it's like I said, this is modified too, so it's not like any different there. Um, but at the same time, though, still great sound. I love it to death. Just got it. Just really, just oh, awesome. I don't even know how to really describe it other than that. And we have this other one, which I've used in a different track. I've used it in my song. I believe it was uh, uh, from the Content with that Content with Apathy EP. It was um, the Void of Mediocrity. Just a filler sound there. <laughs> I'm not even sure, but there you go. Oh yeah, and one thing, thing the reason why, here's a funny thing if you wanna, I don't know, just wanna laugh a little bit, open up another harbor just to show you this more easily. Um, This sound, like, help me, rock me, it really just, it sounds like that's what it's saying to me at least. Just, just think of the phrase, help me, rock me, and listen to this. <laughs> Uh, when I first heard that, when I first made that sound, I heard that I was like, that sounds like a saying, help me rock me. What in the world? Uh, maybe my mind needs to go in better places. <laughs> maybe. Um, but yeah, that's it. I think that's it for basically. Oh, yeah, there, there is the. Oh my gosh. I almost forgot about this sound. Uh, let's see, where is it? I actually might not even have this. Let's see. Where the heck is 22? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's not really... Yeah, I don't know. It's fun. But it is just the Harmer Reese sound. It only plays during like the breakdowns and whatnot. So don't expect it too often if you're listening to this track. So there you go. Now we have the drums after going through this pretty slowly and with a lot of with stuff and things. Um, this is the drum thing. This is the low end. This is like the kick um, right here. This is the high end of the kick because there is like a two sample kick here. So there you go. And I think the way I made this work in terms of I didn't really do any kind of. See, I didn't. I don't think I did anything spectacularly weird with this. Um, I think what I, I think I might have actually used, maybe I didn't, no, I didn't see what I did. I think what I just did is I just simply combined the two and just, it just worked out brilliantly somehow. I think they're, they're really, it's really supposed to be like two separate kicks for two separate purposes, but like, you know, the high end and the low end, but it just kind of works together anyway. That's definitely the low end, I can tell you that for sure. That's where pretty much all the low end is at. This, I think I actually, no, actually I think I cut off all the low end by just simply like shortening it up so much that the decay on the butt, on the sub bass just simply vanishes completely. Like if I copy this and then this, yep, exactly, that's what I thought. So there you go. Just low the low, just all of it is gone just by, you know, shortening up the actual length of the sample to the point where it's not even there. Pretty good stuff. Just a helpful helpful tip, uh, tip if you want to know that. And then after that, we have two snare samples combined into one. Um, this one, I do think I uh, did a little bit of stuff. 
this really isn't that special. It's just simply like you can see just from the effects. Um, I have, this is my uh, transient processor, Transpire. It is a very, it is very effective. It's also completely free too. And this is how I make my drones super snappy. Um, so this is at least one of the ways I do that. Transpire, very awesome. And I just use this in combination with this uh, snare sample here. So, ever want a lot of stuff. A lot of reverb, that's the way to go about it, so. And I think all the low end's gone on it, too. Just brought back up with uh, this right here, so there you go. I don't even know what the heck I was doing with the snare combinations, but there you go. And then it's all being routed into drums, and then the, I have this um, drum loop here thing. It's just playing in the very beginning, you know, it's just meant to add some, some stuff. Symbols, of course, it's, uh, whatever, it's just symbols. Um, how I do my symbols, I'm also, I guess, I guess I might as well talk about this. How I do my symbols is basically how I've always done my symbols, symbols but it's always been, it's now in like a, a patcher patch. So I guess I'll talk about this like a separate sound design thing, maybe a separate sound video or something, I don't know. Um, but it's, uh, patcher is definitely the way to go with that kind of stuff. It just makes it super easy, so, yeah. Yeah, fun times. And I think that's it for drums and everything. Oh, wait, no, no, no. We got one more thing. We got two FX uh, things in particular. So we have this one. This is like the only non-melodic um, element that is actually dragged from the original. And this is a simple um, FX riser thing that I really liked from the original. It's super creative. But I didn't want to recreate anything, so I just decided to render it out and it is, you know, just accordingly. So, see if we can play. It's just meant to bring back, you know, feelings from the original. And then finally we have this FX Bells, which... Quite literally, um, I don't even know how to pronounce this plugin. I'm not even sure it's even alive anymore. I think somebody told me they can couldn't buy it or something like that. I think it's defunct. Um, but I've always used this like my string sample library thing. It's very cheap, not that great, but at the same time, though, not that bad either. So, and it has some. It has an orchestral kit which has a couple bell sounds, and I really like these bell sounds. It makes it sound like Christmas. Um, fun times. And that, I think, is actually finally all the melodic stuff there and all the elements and things like that. And let's go down to the arrangement. Um, now, the arrangement of this song, very, very simple in terms of actual layout. It's really not any surprises. Um, but when I was looking through this whole thing, the only thing that was really of any kind of surprise is just how long the breakdown was in actuality, at least in terms of numbers. It didn't really necessarily feel that way, but when I look at it, it makes sense. So anyway, let's get to the started. Now... We have this intro here. I personally have to break the intro down into intro part A and part B, and right now that part was part A. And that's 16 bars. This is the, this is the next 16 bars of the intro. I really wouldn't consider this song to have a breakdown. So in that regard, it does go straight into the drop. Um, because if you listen to the actual, I guess you could quote unquote say breakdown, there really isn't much to it. It just kind of, the, the actual like notes of the bass just change to the main, uh, I guess you could say pattern of the drop. It's just an, it's just having the same like bass progression, like the note progression, as the chords that you see in here, like the string chords. That's all there is. Until we get to like this part right here, then it goes all F sharp. And only just for a little bit, and then it drops right here. So there really, at least in my opinion, there really isn't a breakdown breakdown like in the traditional sense. 
I like the drum speed up and then it just stops and then all the drop just gets ro- let loose and it just drops on you like a hammer. Then it just drops on you like a hammer. There is no build up. It's just like bam, smack you in the face like this. <laughs> That's one thing about this song that I really wanted to have, is I wanted to have a lot of good pauses in this. Especially considering the fact the original had a lot of good pauses too. Just a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, there you go. Now, like I said, that's the first, that's drop part A, I guess you could say. Um, hey, that rhymes. Um, and then we get to the part B of uh, the first drop. We change up the bass sounds, and we also add a choir to this as well. And, um, I don't know, just the FX bells are also added as well, that's another thing. And just intensifying the song itself until it just, until, until it gets to the breakdown. With that sweet pause right there. Then we get to the breakdown, like I said. Introducing yet another stringed element, as I introduced before. And it goes on for 32 bars. Technically, you you could say that this is breakdown part... That was breakdown part A, and this is breakdown part B. And I really would break it down like that. I just didn't have it on my notes written like that. But you could break it down like that as well. Because everything gets a little bit more intense, and then the drums actually do speed up as well. So there you go. Now we have drop two. Variant of the first drop by a a whole lot. And this, this is where vomit this goo comes in. Very, very nasty. Now, I would not consider this part B right here, only because it still has the same energy. It's just like it's throwing you like a like a wrench, like a monkey throws a wrench into like some sort of clockwork machine type of thing. It just kind of throws your balance off. It's meant to get you off balance and really just mix it up a lot. This is probably the craziest section of this whole entire song. And without the help of the drums, you probably couldn't make that much sense of it, honestly. At least, if I'm being honest with you. It really goes, like, just completely nutty. But keep in mind, that's all still like, you know, part one of, uh, well, part, that's still part, part A of like the second drop. This is part B right here. You know, go, the drums go back to, you know, from four to the floor to halftime now. So there you go. Still keeping some of the, the crazy sounds in there too. And yeah, and it does go back. Another pause there. And this is the most intense the song ever gets. And then we have the second breakdown. Only 16 bars, but then this is the outro. Yeah, not that surprising, and then of course we get to the outro. Kind of exited in a very similar way to the outro of Lost Mountains, the original mix. 
So yeah, fun times there. I hope you enjoyed the arrangement elements and goals for this. Um, hopefully it wasn't boring for you. But if that was boring, then I don't think sound design will be, because the sound design, very interesting. And I'm not really going to cover individual sounds, because they're all having the same principle, which is lots of sampling and lots of distortions. Let's get to it, and hopefully you enjoyed that one. Sound design, we go! Alrighty, so yes, sound design. We were in sound design for this particular thing. And um, really, I'm not going to cover how to make individual sounds because, like I said, before you skip to the sound design section, they're all utilizing basically the same principle. With the exception of like three sounds in here, which are all not resampled stuff, um, really, they're just utilizing resampled sounds and even the ones that aren't resampled with the exception of the stronghold resample uh stronghold respace and also of course the sub bass they're not utilizing the kind of distortion that i think aids in a lot of glitchy sounds so what i decided to do because i really wanted to have a really good like solid sound design thing i just wanted to be just crazy sounds all over but i didn't really know exactly where to take it in terms of like okay how do i create this sound and i want how to do this i just simply decided you know what i'm going to take sounds i already made but instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to go utilize the harmony distortion and utilize a particular one called like ribbon and i think uh, there's another one uh, it's cute but i think i might have utilized it might just be ribbon i think it might just be ribbon off saturation no, that one doesn't count um it might only be ribbon. I think that's the only one I did with this. Uh, I was not even using any distortion, surprisingly enough. Hmm. I didn't, didn't think about this. So you like compression? Yeah, lots of it too. But really only ribbon distortion within Harmer. Now, ribbon distortion is kind of interesting. It, it's actually very reminiscent of a, of a particular shape you can make with the Wave Shaper. Um, so to kind of help illustrate this, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to f- Hello YouTube. That's me talking in for a different uh, commentary thing. So what I'm going to do right, real quick is I'm going to show you this for a wave shaping thing. Um, I'm just going to drag this sound here. Perfect sound in general for what I want to show you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just route this into its own separate thing way often from the project and i'm going to open up a wave shaper fruity wave shaper now this is the fruity wave shaper this is the default shape this shape basically says there is nothing happening whatsoever there's no distortion there's no nothing it's just 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 there so just it's just no shape but if we lower this down like this you can kind of start to see a little at least start to hear a little bit of a change if i lower it down even more just even more of the change like that. And you can really start to change this a bit more, especially when you mess with the pregame. So you can kind of start to sear it a little bit. It's it's like it's it's kind of like a filter over the actual volume of it right there. Now, one other thing about this is that this harmer shape you can do this like very pretty easily. And it's not necessarily easy easy, but it's kind of where it is right there. Like that's kind of like the magic behind the actual harmer sounds right there. It's distorting and it's also doing a lot of like RM type sounds right there. And that's kind of what the gist of what I wanted to do. So if we put this into a harmer, like a separate harmer patch, right? And utilize the actual ribbon distortion. Let's just resam harmer sample this real quick. Put it on a scale just to get an accurate representation. And also get sharp too. This is what the original sound sounds like. We'll C5. There we go. So that's that note right there. Listen to what this sounds like with ribbon. 
It sounds like it's like distorting it, but also cutting off a lot of the volume too. And the lower that you have the amount, the more it does it. And you can also make it even worse with the pregame in that regard, or better, I guess. Where it just barely shows up in it at all. And if you add, add to the wet, it just even does it even more, like in terms of raw distortion. And so it's just a simple way to kind of create like a kind of a rough, glitchy, textured sound. And when you already have like rough, glitchy texture sounds combined with this, because if I just turn off ribbon, right? Just turn it off. Like they sound really, really nasty. It actually has a bit of a growl to it. Huh. But if we turn on a ribbon, this is what it sounds like now. Just absolutely glitchy mess. It's awesome. And this is the exact same principle I use for every single sound that actually utilizes. Oh, we found one that is a use cube. Nice. Now, cube distortion. I think of cube distortion basically as a uh, less intense version of ribbon in a lot of ways. Because if you do lower it down a lot, it does the same results. As you can hear right here. If I just put it on flat hat, for example, it doesn't do the little glitchy distortion. But if I have it on cube, it does pretty similar stuff to ribbon. Just not as intense. And yeah, it's just uh, that's kind of how I put cube is as far as the variant of ribbon. Now, like I said, this is the case for every single one of the sounds is utilizing this kind of principle. And exception of zombie, which was just a more recent sound that I just experimented with, experimented with, and really enjoyed. Uh, that was basically the principle of the vast majority of these sounds. Soft saturation, a little bit of a difference there. Vomit this goo. Same same distortion principle. You know, ribbon, more ribbon. Machines playing rough, again, ribbon. Although that's not a resampled sound, but it is using the distortion technique. And just there you go. <clears throat> and they can get a lot of variety of sounds. I mean, I don't know if you were listening in the first section of this track where I was talking about the different sounds that were in this, just, just you know, listing them out. But if you listen to the different sounds that I could play from just utilizing um, just just a high transformer, you could just hear lots of variety in this. Just so many sounds. From that one particular sample and that one particular patch. <clears throat> so overall, it's pretty great. Now, one thing I do want to talk about real quickly is the use of resampling that, that is in this sound. Lots of things are just resampling everything. Basically, we resample everything here with a few exceptions. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and there's nothing wrong with resampling from sounds that aren't yours. Like this high transformer sound, I got this from a, um, a different sound. It's called, it's called VG Sharp. It's from a, uh, I know exactly where it's from. I just got to locate it. Um, it's from a Nero Hop sample pack that I downloaded ages ago. And I just, I love the sounds that are in here. Because there's so many good sounds in this that are just ripe for resampling. And you would never guess that that sound was this. I mean, you could probably hear some similarities, but if you didn't even know the context and I didn't show you and I didn't tell you, you would never know. And it, there's nothing wrong with sample, resampling in that regard because people don't know. And it's just a creative way to utilize this different sounds. And I love it. I, I resample my own sounds or resample different people's sounds. It's, it's pretty great. And I love it to death. I think this one was, uh, yeah, this is a sound from my own stuff. Uh, let's see. Grand, grand Bass 2, that's nasty, bro. Apparently that's the sound I made. Um, 
Let's see if I can find it real quickly. Base sales, green sales. See, this is it. This is the one. That's utilizing this. Again, you would never know it if I didn't tell you. So, there you go. And that's really it for as far as sound design. Like I said, it's just not that complicated. Hardware sampling with a lot of, like, cut off distortion, I guess you could say, to create really glitchy sounds. It's really great. And if you want an easy way to create very glitchy sounds, and, you know, just distort it with a lot of cutoff on the actual distortion. So it just kind of peeks in and out. And it's really great. It just creates that awesome sound. And when you already have distorted, glitchy sounds combined with that method of distorting, distortion, makes it freaking awesome. Because then you can create drops that are as freak as dope as me. Because, yes. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, just saying. And yes, that's arrogant, and I don't even care. Because you're watching this video because I'm showing you how to do stuff. Yes. So that was sound design. Let's go on to the mixing and mastering, which is going to contain a very important message if you did watch the previous episode, which you really should have because it was interesting. So let's go ahead and get started with that one. Yes. Alrighty, so now we're on to the mixing and mastering for this particular song. And why is the drums on this? It's weird. Did, did I have it all like that already? Huh. The wolf. What is this? Is this panning? Yeah, that's not right. Um, sorry about the distraction. But anyway, let's cover the mixing and mastering. So, um, basically, what's going on here is that I am I like in the last how I made for this for the original mix that I did. I talked a lot about lack of reverb and i always kind of talk about this when it comes to mixing in particular is that lack of reverb is really your best friend as far as making clear mixes as far as making mixes that make sense and there's nothing wrong with using reverb there's lots of artists that use lots of reverb but the thing that you should also keep note is is that they're using they're it's very difficult i'm going to say it like this it's very difficult to overall have a good solid control of reverb if you're using too much of it and it's so easy to use too much of it and like you could have your decay too much you could have the volume too much there's lots of different things that can really hamper your mix if you're if you have too much reverb because if you think about what reverb is right natural reverb is basically everywhere already but really if you think about this let's just say you say you just you know saying your name in like a cave like Simo, Simo. Like it just kind of delays and you know goes on, but that reverb is really just like a blur of your sound. And the thing about blurring sounds is that they're going to blur everything else along with it. Like it's basically like creating a trail of your of your stuff. The way I like to think about it best overall is that you have like this really awesome painting or your image or like a drawing with like pencil and stuff like that, right? Which is like your song. And then you want to basically smudge it a little bit to really create some really cool realistic effects. You know, you want to have it so that, you know, like the thing looks very, really like light is like kind of blending in everywhere and things like that. When you're actually drawing a pencil and stuff like that, that's a really good technique. As if you are an artist that likes to draw a lot, and this is coming from someone that does draw a decent bit, bit too. Um, so I know what I'm talking about there. But the problem is with using like too much reverb in your song or if you blur the or if you um, um, smudge the drawing too much is that it can ruin the drawing you can really mess up the actual like definement of the actual um of the actual picture that you know where the lines are they kind of illustrate where the face is where the eyes are the hair is if you're not careful you're really going to mess up your song like that or your picture and so you got to be careful and reverb is the same way you can't use too much of it and get away with it in any sense it's not like with drums, like if you make your drums too loud, like it really, like especially with bro step music, like if you have your drums too loud, really not too many people are going to care because it's kind of the point of having the drums that loud anyway because you want them quote unquote too loud regardless. 
And even if they were technically too loud, it'd be so easy to just, just turn them down in the mix, you know, just turn them down. But with reverb, the problem with reverb is that you really have to dial it in. And I think if you don't get it right within your first initial take of doing the particular mix that you have going on, you're, you're bound to get a lot of failure and it's going to mess you up big time. Um, so the thing to keep in mind with this is that you just don't want to have too much reverb and for my case in particular i especially when you first start out trying to do stuff like this i would recommend you just don't use a reverb at all unless it's on something stylish you know what i mean a good example of a stylish type of effect is that if you have a um let's say you have like a kick coming in like let's just imagine this first kick right that first kick let's just imagine it has a bunch of reverb on that kick right now you would normally just never do that, right? But the thing is, you could use that use that reverb on that kick as a really cool, like, uh, I guess you could say, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You could use it as a really cool, like, impact moment. Like, you know, like, you hear those impact sounds from those epics, uh, like, uh, orchestral stuff? You could really do the same thing here. It's not really that different. In fact, I could show you how to do that pretty easily right now. Just low pass the heck out of everything, put a huge size on there, put a lot of bass, and put a fairly meaty decay on there. Three seconds is pretty good in that regard. You know, and I guess for this, lower the, uh, what is this called? The uh, early reflection level. Just lower everything down as far as your high pass stuff and just listen. And you can just adjust the volume accordingly, you know? Now, you will have to do a lot of like tinkering and things like that to really dial it in. But you get what I'm talking about here. It's not that hard. And, you know, putting a lot of stereo on the reverb helps out a lot too. There's so much stuff you can do. And so that's a very, very interesting way to utilize that. And you just automate that when you actually get to the actual drop or start to get to the breakdown. You know what I mean? So not that hard, and that's a very stylistic way of doing it. But you don't want reverb on everything. Like you don't necessarily want reverb, um, at least not nowhere near too much of it. If you're gonna have any of it at all, on like stuff like this, right? You don't want stuff on like reverb on this necessarily. Like, like why in the world would I want reverb on that? Like, like, you see what I mean? Like, that kind of, that can work, maybe. But at the same time, though, it's also hurting the damage, hurting the mix of the song as well. You can still hear it pretty well. But not as well when you have that. And imagine every single thing having something like that. Like, let me just put on, like, a little bit of reverb on the pluck, right? Not even necessarily that much. We could turn down the decay a lot too. We could turn down the 500 milliseconds, right? You know, have a you know some stereo on here. Lower this down. Even lower the volume a bit. You know, have a little bit of high end. You know, all that good stuff. A lot of bass, high size. And then it starts to really damage the sound a lot. And you know. Again, I'll just add another reverb on something else. And again, not that very useful overall. And you can see, you, you can start to not really hear that much about, uh, about the individual sounds there because there's just so much reverb going on with all these different things versus just having them all off. And you can actually hear it a little bit better. And just imagine if you had a reverb on everything and it was stupidly loud and not even in the background whatsoever. It just destroys your mix. And it doesn't take very long for it to start to do stuff like that. It really doesn't. I mean, you would have your, even if you had all the volumes at like on reverb at 20% or 25% or something like that, all that combined, 
blurs the sound and it just adds together. And it really does not help at all. So I keep saying this over and over again. And really, people need to learn this if they're going to have a really good mix, period. And, you know, like I said, you can have some reverb on some things. Like, if I look at the strings, right? I look at the strings. Um, actually, no, is it the choir? Yeah, it's the choir. That's what I meant to say. Look at the choir right here, right? The choir has reverb. Now, part of that is just to actually not make it sound stupidly dry. But, at the same time, though, it's like at 100% volume, right? It's like, it's like, that's a lot of reverb for a choir, but it's a freaking choir. It's supposed to have that kind of texture to it, you know what I mean? So, overall, not that big of an issue for a choir, or strings, or something of the background, or something stylistic, like, you know, the drum thing I was talking about with the kick, where you can create an impact like that. No, not a bad idea there, but why would you want to like a pluck or something like that? And, like, unless you're doing something like, again, stylistic there. Like, you just listen to the intro of the pluck, right? Lots of reverb on that when you first hear it. But that's the intro. You can do a lot of stylistic things with the intro on reverb, period. It's just not even a problem. So, I really wouldn't worry about it. Not a big deal. In terms of that kind of thing in the intro, but the moment you start to get in more into the drop, start leveling out a lot of the things, especially if you want to have a lot of instruments in your song, a lot of elements in your song. It's very important to do that. So, yes. Now, that's pretty much the main thing, and I do once again want to highlight the differences that I have with these two particular songs overall so what i'm going to do real quickly i'm just going to show you just show you better than i can tell you in terms of basically like how your mom would always say like hey i can show you better than i can tell you is if you're going to raise you know, a little bit more ghetto i guess or black or something whatever whatever the terminology is i, I don't keep up with that stuff terribly often um but i will show you what i mean in terms of this whole aspect of like just just having a bit more having too much reverb and overall not paying attention and if i can find the actual file for the song so i know where to find it is it's gonna be right here so listen to this real quickly just listen to the original mix of lost mountains right you got this song right here lost mountains the original mix Listen how clear, and I want you to listen just in clarity, in, in, no, in just terms of the, clear, the clarity of the drop. That was the original mix. Listen again to the drop of the freaking VIP mix because it's going to really tell you the difference between the two if it actually plays. <laughs> one's a lot more clear, one's not. Mostly do the reverb. Now, there's other things, of course, that really add to that. You know, maybe not as good side chaining. Maybe just in general, not really trying to, like, you know, not like high passing as many items as possible. That's definitely a contributing factor. But well, one of the most major contributing factors to that original mix not being very good mix wise, just the fact there's too much reverb. So I, I cannot stress that any more than I have. Just keep that in mind, please. You know, I mean, I think maybe the only one exception to this kind of rule is, like, atmospheric stuff. Because atmos atmospheric stuff just relies on that kind of stuff. And unless you're doing that kind of genre, I really wouldn't recommend you do too much reverb, period. Because, yeah, there you go. And even that genre can have its limits depending on what you're doing as well. So keep that in mind. So anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys have learned something very useful. At least I hope you have. 
And if you have, be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe for more stuff. I think the next video should be uh, another, should be the You With Me VIP mix. I think, at least if I remember the list correctly. Or it might be a different video for next Friday. Either way, you'll see one next Friday, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch y'all later in the next one, and goodbye.